What I have today here are two controllers from Gamesir. They are within the new Cyclone T4 Cyclone series. So this is the Gamesir T4 Cyclone Pro. This is the Cyclone only. And while they are within the same series, but they are for different consoles. So um, let's unbox each of them and go through the differences because I do think that it is very important. And the first difference that you can see here is of course the inclusion of this dongle. For the Pro, you will get the dongle, but for the non-Pro, you won't get the dongle. And uh, some of you might have already suspected where all this is going. So let's unbox the T4 Cyclone first without the Pro. So this one is in the Daybreak color, which means it's white. And it is only available in a single color. The Pro is only available in the Midnight color, so we'll leave that for later. Unboxing process is real simple, so what we're gonna do is just open it up. And then, this box is a bit fancy. They kind of expect us to pull to unbox, so you have to break the entire cardboard box to get inside, but if you don't want to do that, then you can just do this, just open it from the side. Take out the cable. Then we can get the controller out and also another packet for all of the documentation and whatnot. This is important but we'll go through it later. As for the controller, as you can see here, the overall design is very similar to the Xbox Series controller. So you have a very, I wouldn't say grippy, this is more like a bunch of uh, dots to give you extra grip but that's it it doesn't actually increase the friction so for sweaty gamers like me then this kind of texture is gonna help a lot and all of the buttons are as usual they're using membrane switches and then the d-pad is not clicky and it doesn't have that diamond shape so fighting game lovers will be kind of cautious of all this joysticks are real good they're all using the hot effect joysticks by the way as stated on this packaging here can it focus? Yes, Hall Effect Sensors. So that's good. Then at the back here, you also have two pedals that you can configure using the GameSir app. As for the top here, you can see there is a smartphone holder slot that you can put in. But um, there is no such accessory in the package. And according to the user manual, it says that you can purchase it separately. But uh, as far as I know, it is still not available on GameSir's website. So I'm not too sure what's going on. So for this controller, we do have the minus and plus button alongside with the screenshot button. The big chicken logo here is actually the Gamesa logo. So you can just press on that to actually use it as a home button. This is the pairing button, which we will also go through it later. Mode button, yeah, you can configure a few things like turbo mode, uh, changing this analog triggers to become hair triggers, which is real good. So. That's about it for all of the features, we'll leave this here. Then we will now unbox the T4 Cyclone Pro, which again is very similar, but uh, there are a few differences, major differences that I want to highlight. So packaging, same. So within the T4 Cyclone Pro's packaging, for the accessories box, we also get the dongle as mentioned earlier. And as you can see here, there is actually one button here to help you to pair it with the controller once more if you accidentally unpair it. But surprisingly though, this dongle can also be paired with the T4 Cyclone, the non-pro version. So that's uh, something to take note of and Gamester did say that this dongle is sold separately as well but as far as I know, it's not available on their website and the price of this dongle should be around 10 US dollars or 50 ringgit Malaysia, somewhere around there. And as you can see here, the biggest difference between these two controllers are the arrangement of the face buttons. So for the Cyclone Pro, it is using ABXY, which is following the Xbox controller's face button layouts. But for this T4 Cyclone non-Pro, it is using the Nintendo Switch version, which is ABXY. And as you can see here for my Switch, ABXY, which is the same as the non-pro version and it is swapped when we compare it with the Cyclone Pro. So that is the biggest 
difference ever. So now let's check out the user manual for a while because there are quite a lot of features built into this controller as well. The user manual is real big. So let me back up a bit and let's see it opens up. So right here we can see the phone holder slot, phone holder not included. That is what we have. So as for all of the devices that you can pair this controller with, as you can see here, uh, you can use Bluetooth, green means it's a dongle, and then red is for Nintendo Switch only, and yellow is Bluetooth mode, which also works for your iOS devices or iPads if you want to, or even MacBooks actually. So for the turbo functions, we can do 12, 20, or 30 hertz. So slow, medium, high. We will show that later as well because uh, I find that to be real fancy. And then configurable buttons are all of these. Turbo setup is real simple. We'll show you later. And as for the mode button and configuration button, you can kind of configure quite a lot of stuff. So first one is the hairline trigger. You can just make it become a digital trigger instead of an analog trigger. And then for this one, you can select the vibration intensity. So for this option here is to change between all of the modes. I really never use this feature at all. This one is to change the date zone and this one is to swap the button positions. So A, B, X, Y will be flipped. A and B will be flipped. X and Y will be flipped. So if you're gonna play some games and you find it to be more useful in the Nintendo Switch button layout, then you can just use that mode. Once again, I never really bothered with that feature as well. So that's all of the features available. So it is very obvious that the non-pro version is meant for the Nintendo Switch because of its button layout and also no dongles included and you can just directly pair it with the Nintendo Switch whereby for the pro version, you can use it the best for your PC because of this dongle here. Of course, 2.4 GHz is always better than having to connect it via Bluetooth because of how finicky Bluetooth is when it comes to Windows. And um, I have played Genshin Impact on PC using the Pro Controller for quite a long time. Overall, the buttons feel a bit mushy because they're using micro switches. I don't know if you can hear it. They are quite clicky, but the travel distance between the button is just not that good to press. It ultimately feels a bit mushy for me. I don't really like how the button feels, but that's about it. And then there are also two more vibration motors for the LT and RT. And you can also configure the vibration strength using the GameSir app, which we will go through later. And as for this controller, I really do like how it feels. It's a bit too lightweight for me, but overall, the buttons they're using the more traditional membrane buttons, which is snappy, has adequate enough bounce back and also travel distance and they just feel really nice to press. And now it's time for the GameSir app. So what I'm gonna do is to turn on the app on my phone. Where is GameSir? So what we have to do is to enter this controller into Bluetooth mode, which is pressing A, I think. I think this is it. Then we... Oh, it's already paired. That's good. So. As you can see here, GameSir Cyclone Pro has been paired and then we can enter key settings and then from here, it does have quite a lot of features. So we can also permanently switch between Switch and Xbox layout using this app. And then for L4 and R4 are these two back pedals here. You can map it to whatever you want. Currently, it's just using the L3 and R3 buttons, which is pressing down the joysticks, but I can just configure them to, let's just say X or B, whatever. You can do whatever you want. And then for the sticks, you can configure the date zone if you want to, because they're whole sensor joysticks anyway. And this is also to test out if there's anything wrong with your joysticks. So far, so good. So no problems there. You can also swap between X and Y axis or lock whatever axis that you want. For triggers, yeah, since they are analog triggers, you can calibrate how deep you want it to press before going into 100%. And uh, these are all good features to have. So if you change it to hair trigger by just going down halfway, 
it detects 100%. So for vibration, as you can see here, there are a total of four vibration motors, two on this side and then two more on the triggers themselves. So that's why you have a total of four motors. So if we hold this trigger here, you can see it vibrating because there's one motor directly below the L trigger. Then for R trigger, it's the same. Vibration motor is a bit noisy. Hmm. And that's about it. You can also change your vibration strength directly on the app, which is real handy. And overall app features on the two controllers are actually the same. So let me just jump to this controller just to show you real quick. So once we have paired it, we enter key settings once more. Here we have the exact same features. The sticks are the same. The triggers are also the same. And as for the vibration motors for this controller here, the non-pro version, we only have vibration motors on this side and this side. And that's why we only have two controls instead of four. Now to showcase some of the controller features, I want to specifically highlight what's on the non-pro version because I think this is a lot more featureful than a lot of controllers in the market right now. So firstly, as you can see, the controller has been turned off since the light is not turned on. If I press it, it turns on. And then if I press it once more, it does have remote turning on for the console, which is real good. So once we go into the game, yeah, just take a while to actually pair the controller after it's turned on. This is Metroid Prime and I want to quickly show you the turbo feature, which I think is real nice. So if we press it once, and hold same as we charge the shot so that's pretty common this is how the game is supposed to work but if you enable turbo mode by holding m and press y you can see it flashes that is turbo mode one which is slow so now if you hold the button the rate of it flashing indicates the speed of the turbo mode it's in so if i press it once more this is mode number two which is a lot faster this is 20 hertz, I think. As you can see, Samus is shooting a lot faster. For the third mode is, I forgot what's the rate, but as you can see here, it's really fast. And this is what's gonna happen. <laughs> it's insanely fast, right? And the reason why I use Metroid Prime for this example is because this game doesn't limit how fast you can press the controller. Anyway, that's it for these two controllers. Overall, I would say the non-pro version is an excellent controller for the Nintendo Switch, but that doesn't mean you cannot use it for other devices. For example, your Android phones, tablets, or even your PC, for example. It's just that using Bluetooth is a bit finicky. This Pro version for the Cyclone controller is perfect for PC because it also comes with the dongle. It's not that suitable for Switch because the button layout it will get a bit confusing. The price overall, this one is at 40 US dollars or about 196 Ringgit Malaysia. As for the Pro version, it's at 50 US dollars, also about 250 Malaysian Ringgit, which overall I would say the price is okay, competitive enough if you compare it with other controllers in the market right now. Real high quality stuff is just a little bit lightweight, especially for the non-pro, and the Micro Switch is definitely not my cup of tea, but it might be for you because of its clickiness. So yeah, that's it. Overall, Good controllers, I'll leave you links on where to buy them down in the description below. And that's it. We'll see you guys in the next video.